focusing on topics and issues that reach our communities with the love and the power of Jesus Christ. And yes, welcome. I'm glad that you have decided to join us here at Outreach Connection. I'm Gary Schluckaberry, your host, and um, have an incredible program again today. Maybe you want to VCR this or, or uh, you want to call some friends and uh, get them online and, and uh, to watch the show today. In fact, this is going to be a two-part show, and we're doing the first part this week, and we'll do the second part next week on, on the show. Let me read to you um, scripture to open with here, though, and out of Isaiah chapter 58, verse 12, kind of the theme verse for Outreach Connection, because, you know, it's the outreach for the Lord Jesus Christ, and God is concerned about the whole world. Not just, yes, our world, our little world and everything God's involved in and concerned about. But I'm talking about, and my guest today travels the whole world in his missionary efforts. And it says in verse 12 of Isaiah 58, And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations. And thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach the restorer of paths to dwell in. And this is exactly what my guest does. He goes, he's from all over the world. Let me just introduce you here to him, missionary Dr. Leon Van Ruen. Thank you for being with me around the table. And let me just say a few things about you so that the audience will know a little bit about you here as we uh, get started here. You. Um, uh, have the the ministry of of the global ministries and relief. That's right, Gary. Great to be with you. Global ministries and relief, based out of Tampa, Florida. Out of Tampa, Florida. But to the nations. Originally, you were you're from Zimbabwe. I was born in Zimbabwe, and then as a teenager moved to South Africa, and that's where my ministry began over 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, your ministry, you have, understand you have quite a team that you've put together, you've, you've uh, universities, you're out there. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this uh, Dr. Leon, he gets, he gets his hands down in to the nitty gritty of the life of people all over the world. Yeah, you know, God's called us to reach the masses, but the masses are not just faces out there, they're individuals, they're families, and each person is vital and important to the Lord. Right. And so our ministry is, is reaching the nations, but it's not the nations, it's one by one by one by hundred by a thousand by ten thousand, yeah. but each one's life is so valuable, so precious. And that's what we're about, touching lives. Yeah. Well, tell us, Dr. Just how did all this begin? Let's let's start. Let's kind of start at the beginning here, because now after this many years, of course, you, all your endeavors and the growth of reaching people, groups of people, individuals, also for the cause of Christ. Just how did you start in your journey? Well, over 40 years ago, I was in the military, and before going into combat, I, I needed to get my life right with God, and I was getting ready for our first pre-dawn attack, and I said, Lord, I need you in my heart. I don't want to die. I, I'd grown up in a Christian family, but I wasn't saved. Okay. And I tried to find the Lord in that position, waiting to go into combat, but I couldn't. I had no peace in my soul. So I'm, I said these words, Lord, if you keep me alive, I will serve you. So when I came out of the military, I started going from church to church, religion to religion, trying to find who the living God was. I knew that there was a creator, and I knew that we weren't a part of a big bang, some universal explosion. I knew there was a designer. I knew there was someone. I wasn't convinced that Jesus 
the God of the church was the God. Yeah. Because having grown up in a religious environment, I wasn't persuaded the God that I saw in the church I grew up and the God I saw in the Bible seemed to be different. Yeah. And I wanted to discover the real God. So um, I went to church with the goal of getting my life right, but I'd go from church to church and I'd go in and I'd think, this isn't it, this isn't it. One day I went into a church and I sensed the presence of God. So I, the, the preacher gave an altar call, I ran up and I, I, he said, you're an enthusiastic young man. Well, I'd waited years to get my life right with God. I said, yes. So they ushered me out into a back room and as I was about to kneel down to call on the name of the Lord for salvation, my life was flashed before me in an open vision. And I heard the voice of the Lord say, I've called you to be a preacher of my word and to go to the nations. And he showed how he kept me alive, how he touched my life, how he called my life. But like Samuel, I had no... Uh, perception or understanding of the reality of God and so having seen those scenes in my life I suddenly was aware yeah God you spoke to me I just didn't hear your voice you kept me alive I didn't recognize your hand and so I knelt down I, I invited him into my heart and from that moment I started to live for God my ministry started on the streets, just ministering to people, okay. witnessing, sharing Christ, going into the villages of Africa, going into the streets, the highways and the byways. But I knew that God had called me. And so I, I was a surfer. I started working amongst the surfing community in my city and led many to the Lord, got involved in my church. And uh, it's quite strange, Gary. It's an interesting story. I went to my pastor, and I, uh, I wanted so badly to go to Bible school. So I went with an application form. I needed him to recognize the call of God and my character. So I went to him. I said, uh, Pastor, God's called me into the work of God. I want to go to Bible school, but I need your recommendation. And he looked at me, and he said, I can't do that. Well, I had a choice. I could have got offended. I could have left the church. I could just buckle down and keep pressing in. So I chose not to get offended, even though I couldn't understand why he felt this way. And uh, I have this testimony. I couldn't get into Bible school. Today I have two doctorates, and I have over 2,000 Bible schools worldwide. Isn't God something? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so anyway, I, I stayed faithful. Eventually God's grace came upon my life, and He moved me to a different city. I got out of that church and uh, started studying, got into Bible school. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how my ministry began, an encounter with God, mm -hmm. filled with the Spirit of God, empowered, started ministering, souls saved, just one-on-one, -on -one, and then crowds. And my, my first preach was phenomenal. I was witnessing on the street, and this woman comes up to me, and she says, you need to come to my church to preach. I said, okay. <laughs> so we swapped numbers. It was long before cell phones and yeah. long before answering machines. Right. So she called me and said, I would like you to come this Wednesday. Uh, what I didn't know is, you understand, I grew up in South Africa. Our nation was divided, black and white, uh, yeah. colored and Indian because of apartheid. Whites were not allowed into black locations. Okay. You had to have a permit to go in. They had to have a permit to come into our areas. Okay. Um, so I was invited into this black township to preach in an Anglican church. And, yeah, I mean, I'd... I was so young in the Lord, so naive. I thought the yeah. church is one. I didn't understand different doctrinal positions. Sure. I was just God hungry. I'll come. Yeah. <laughs> so my wife and I, we go into this township and I preach as maybe about 400 plus people. I preach the gospel. 
and uh, I give an altar call just like I saw my pastor and the whole church stands up. I, I say to them, sit down. I don't think you really understand what I'm saying. This is about really committing your life to Christ. If you're not born again and you want to receive Jesus into your heart, I want you to stand up. And the whole church stood up. I said, no, I want you to sit down. Maybe it's the language because I was working through a translator. Let me explain again. And the whole church stood up. I said, okay, come forward and laid hands on them. The power of God was all over. So my first preach was in an Anglican church. Over 400 people came forward for salvation, divine healing, miracles, baptism in the Spirit. And the Archbishop of the, of the region was in that meeting. And uh -oh. when I got to praying for the Spirit, he said, I want this Holy Spirit that you've got. Oh, wow. <laughs> and that's how my ministry began. Wow. Well, God yeah. was in all of that for sure. Wow. And uh, so then from there... Um, into missions work? Well, one day I was driving down the road uh, between two cities. I was still in secular employment, and I saw this golden light on a hill. And I'm driving and I'm looking at it, and it's very, very bright. And suddenly I'm caught in an open vision, and I'm standing in a village. And I hear the voice of God, who shall I send and who will go? And I said, Yara, my Lord, send me. And then he started to give me specific strategies to reach the villages of Africa. Mm -hmm. And, the, you know, um, the details of that vision still flood not only my subconscious being, but my conscious being. Every detail, the blades of grass, the sand, the clarity, the walls, the, the roof, the buildings that I saw in that vision. Um, I go back into my car, I'm driving, and um, I get invited to this first village. So I arrive in the village, it's a cold winter's day, and uh, the missionary that I worked with, he said, now go around the village and just invite people to the central part, what we call a crawl where they will gather and you'll preach. So I'm going around from house to house just inviting people. And I come into this one home and this child's face is out like this swollen with this abscess. Yeah, I've never seen anything as pathetic as that side. I've never seen a face so swollen. So I said to his mom, mother, bring your son. You've got to understand I'm a young inexperienced. I'm not trained. I haven't been to Bible school. I know nothing. John 3.16, John 3.3, 3, I'm working my way through the New Testament. I say, Mother, bring your son, God is going to heal him. So the, the missionary says, start to preach, and I'm preaching on the love of God, the righteousness of faith, what it means to be born again, and it's like I'm hitting a wall. There's nothing happening. You can tell when you're preaching if people are getting it or they're not. So nothing is happening. Suddenly my eye catches this boy in the crowd. So I say, Mother, bring your son here. God is going to heal him. And I laid hands on his face very gently because it was so swollen. Mm -hmm. And I said, in the name of Jesus, as I said, in the name of Jesus, a demon came out of him. Mm. You had to be there to see it. Sure, I understand. Uh, today with technology, you know, YouTube, they would have been videoing it and taking photos. And, sure. you know, it would have gone viral. It was a classic because the kid projectile vomited as this demon came screaming out of him. And the vomit was coming right for me. So you got to see this in slow motion. Oh. Uh -huh. And I stepped aside and the vomit came past me which was a good thing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the demon comes out of this kid and his face goes down to normal straight away. Well, the whole village mm. is just now there's no more barrier, no, no more wall. Yes. One right. miracle makes a difference. Yes. yes. And I led that village to Christ and we went down into the valley and we baptized them on a cold African day. Wow. The entire village, yeah. mothers, fathers, grandfathers, strong, weak, got saved and we launched a church in that village. That was my first village that I led to Christ. Okay. And that took me into 
missions, of course, between then I started studying the word, gaining knowledge, but I worked in the villages of Africa, I worked in the refugee camps, I Mm. planted churches, over 65 churches in seven years in that region where that miracle took place. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow. I'm sitting here thinking of um, Peter and John, silver and gold have I none. You know, these disciples were known as ignorant and unlearned. And you had mentioned, you know, in your younger days, uh, and uh, the power of God is just well, powerful. Well, you know, they, the religious leaders said they are uneducated, untrained. However, this is really important. They had been with the teacher of all Jesus. teachers, the prophet of all prophets, yeah. the evangelist of all evangelists, yeah. the yeah. pastor of all pastors, and the apostle of all apostles, Jesus Christ. Yes. And he personally discipled them, taught and trained them. Mm-hmm. So they may not have had formal education. They did not sit at the feet of Gamaliel, but they sat yeah. at the feet of him who said, let Amen. there be light, and there was light, yeah. the source of all wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, Amen. taught them. They may not have been trained. And this is an important thing. You know, um, we need to equip the saints. Yes, sir. We need to make disciples. We need people to be trained. My people perish for a lack of knowledge. And so it is inexcusable today for Christians to be ignorant concerning the Word of God. Mm-hmm. We, we as leaders that, that in the church, so we need wow. to get them to yes. come to a place of not just having uh, the amazing grace, how sweet the sound, to avoid hell and, uh, and make heaven, but how that they can live on earth and fulfill the purpose and the destiny of God. And that's what Global Ministries and Relief is all about, my life and ministry's focus. It's not so much just reaching villages and masses of people, because the Great Commission was not to make decisions. Jesus said, go make disciples. Well, what's a disciple? A convinced learner, a student. Jesus said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. He took ordinary people, he equipped, he empowered their lives, and he made them carriers of his glory, such as I have, I give unto you. And that's not just for apostles, that's for every believer that they become carriers of the Word and the power of God. Well, in your vision, you know, um, uh, you, can, you can go on the web, his web page, and uh, I know we'll have it up there on the screen, but uh, you can go on his web page, which I did and pulled some things up. Here's, here's the vision of Dr., what, what he's talking about right here, reaching the loss, discipling the found, which is uh, really important to my heart today, discipleship. Um, which is kind of lacking, I think, sometimes in the church. But we've got to step out and do it. But anyway, reaching the lost, discipling the found, building the church. Right. And here's the thing. Jesus said, occupy until I come. Occupy means what? Do business. What's God's business? Souls. It's not His will that any should perish, but that all should have everlasting life. But souls is not a hand raised, a prayer prayed. It's a committed life, okay. laying down your all, following Him, Jesus is Lord, and it's allowing the Spirit of God and the men and women of God that He places around our lives to disciple us, to teach us, to train us. Your church must become a place of equipping, of training, of discipling, so that you can become full-grown, mature, stable, mm-hmm. committed, sold out, instead of this wishy-washy, weak-kneed, gutless, namby-pamby, kind of superficial, avoid hell, make heaven. That's not what this is about. God wants His people to be carriers of His glory. The knowledge of the glory of the Lord will cover the earth. How? By people putting their feet down, proclaiming the gospel, and raising their world with the Word, with the Gospel, with the power of God. You know, in devotions the other day, my wife and I, um, at home before we left for work, we were talking about this very thing. And um, Paul said to Timothy, preach the Word, what's, you know, the, the Bible. Yeah. And I have found in my own experiences over the years 
that when I've tried to put together a nice sermon, uh, you know, study research or whatever, somebody else's words and stuff, but when I would come in and just open the Bible to a group and just start preaching the word, take a parable or something, and go there, the power of the Lord or the Spirit moves upon that. And um, I've had more people come and say, I, I understand that, I, you know, with the Holy Spirit working. And um, I understand you preach the Word. And I said, well, that's what the Word, that's what we're supposed to do yeah. as ministers. And the Holy Spirit will give the people yeah. the understanding Well, we are Bible it. preachers. <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. Uh, we're not just preachers. We preach the Word. And they went everywhere preaching the Word. And as you preach the Word, then God is confirming that Word. And so, you know, of course, we study, we meditate, we memorize the Word. I personally see every time I preach, I call it the law of the farm. What you sow is what you reap. I put in years of study, reading, memorization. Yeah. But then as I articulate that with conviction to the people, the Holy Spirit teaches them, leads them, guides them, Amen. builds them, equips them, and we raise them up. And, and that's what we are. We are Bible yeah. preachers. Yeah. And here's, here's the word now. The, this word this gospel message. You're the missionary that takes it all over the world with your different mission, with your feeding the poor, the orphanages, mm -hmm. the medical uh, relief uh, teams that you bring in, all that you do in preaching the Word. This gospel fits not only in America, but in Africa, sure. in the poorest of countries, around the world, India? Yeah, this word will work for anyone, anywhere. It will work in New York City with the bankers, with the rich. It will work for a peasant in a rice paddy in Vietnam, or for an Indian subsistent farmer. It will work for a, a doctor, a professor, a lawyer, a housewife. Doesn't matter where they're at, this word is for all men everywhere. Without exception. Without exception. If you're a man somewhere, a woman somewhere, the gospel is for you. <laughs> right. I tell you what, you're on that theme. Um, why don't you go ahead and speak to camera three? Let, let's, maybe there's somebody out there listening right now, because we're going to come back, you know, and do part two here. But um, why don't you just give a call out? Maybe there's somebody listening that doesn't quite understand. They believe in God. Well, maybe they haven't been born again. How does all that happen? Uh, what do they have to do for salvation's sake? I, I'd love to do that, Gary. To yeah. on that. Probably you're watching it at home today, and you may fit into two categories. Number one, you're a believer, you're a follower of Jesus, you love Him, but your life is not where it ought to be. You fit into that category that I spoke about of being gutless, namby-pamby, wishy-washy. You're just superficial, and you want to become serious about God, then this is for you. The second group are those that have never invited Jesus into your heart. You know that there is a living God, just like I knew there's a living God. You know that you're not a mistake. You know that there's a design, but you want to get your life right with God. This is how it goes. Number one, realize that God loves you. For God so loved the world. He didn't just love the world. He loves you. Mm. You say, well, my life is really messed up. It does not matter. Christ came to save sinners. He didn't come to save the righteous. He gives us a righteousness that is beyond what we can do. Our best works cannot save us. We are saved by the grace of God, received by faith. If you say, Jesus, come into my life, if you call on the name of the Lord, the Bible says you will be saved. There's no ifs, buts about it. You will be. Something will happen to your life Amen. right now. If you Amen. call on the name of the Lord, you will become a new creation. The old will pass away. Today you will have a brand new beginning. You will have new values, new sense of purpose. The things you wanted to do, you'll no longer want to do. You will want to live for God from this day. Now here's how you do it. You pray a prayer, meaning it with all your heart. 
not just a parrot regurgitating the words that I'm going to pray and you're going to follow these words, but let it come from your heart. It's you speaking to God. And know this, the Bible says, if you call out to the Lord, He will hear you, yes. He will answer, and He's about to do something in your life and for your life right now. If you call on the name of the Lord, you will be saved. It doesn't matter what you've done. The blood of Jesus will cleanse you from all sin and give you a brand new beginning. Mm -hmm. Now, here's how we're going to pray. I'm going to say a, a sentence, and you've got to forgive me. I have a bit of an accent. If I say something that you don't quite understand, make up your own word. <laughs> but it's your voice, your heart, your faith to God. God's going to hear you. He's going to answer your prayer. And you're going to get in touch with the studio. Let them know, and they'll give you some direction of how to go further in this. Pray this prayer with me. You want to get your life right with God. You want to be serious about God, or you want to be born again. Pray this prayer. Lord God Almighty, you are the maker of heaven and earth, but you are also the Savior of my soul. You loved me so much that you sent Jesus to die on the cross for me. I believe that he took my place died for my sins, and I call upon the name of the Lord Jesus to be my Savior. From this day forward, I will follow you. I lay down all my own ambitions, goals, desires. You will be my highest priority. You'll be number one, numero uno in my life. From this day forward, you are my God. No other God besides you. I will follow you. I will serve you. I will uh, learn your word. I will study it. I will grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord. And I will be raised up to be a light in this world of darkness. Mm -hmm. Come into my life, O oh God. Holy Spirit, fill my life. Mm -hmm. Empower my life. Change my life. I am yours and you are mine. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for new beginnings. Thank you for a brand new start. I worship you. I honor you, Jesus, my God, my Lord, my Savior, my healer. You are my everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, yes. God heard it. Gary, over Amen. to you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And then you may say, well, what do I do now? Well, let me just give you a, a couple of tips here. What you do. Don't sit back because you are born again. You are going, you've asked the Lord into your heart. You've asked for forgiveness of sins. And you're going to see a change in your attitude. You're really going to see a change. And I've experienced it. I know what I'm talking about. Here's what you do. I want you to get yourself a Bible if you don't have one. Uh, beginning reading with John, uh, the Gospel of John. Look in the contents. It'll tell you where to go if you don't know how to read the Bible. Begin reading that word little by little. Study it. Talk to God just like we're talking to you. Just like you followed the prayer of Dr. Leon here. You followed that prayer. You talked to God. That's what you were doing. And God heard you. And find yourself a church home if you don't have a church home. You need to get the fellowship of other brothers and sisters in the Lord. And um, uh, follow that plan. Be sure to tell somebody that you're saved, that you've given your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. Join us next week. We're going to have part number two of our show. We're going to go in more into your missionary work. Thank you so much for joining us. Call somebody and tell them to watch for next week too. God bless you. Contact us at Outreach Connection, WTJR 222 North 6th Street, Quincy, Illinois 62301. You have a 100% chance of success in marriage when you do it God's way. Don't settle for a mediocre marriage. Inspire lifelong love and passion. Marriage Today with Jimmy and Karen is devoted to helping couples thrive in strong, fulfilling marriages and families. Take your marriage to the next level of fulfillment and intimacy. Connect to Marriage Today with Jimmy and Karen on this station.